Get ready to explore the fascinating world of George Washington Carver. Let's go! But before we dive in, let's hit you with some fun facts about this incredible man who changed Woo! the game. Did you know George Washington Carver was not just a scientist, but also a musician and artist? Talk about talents, he discovered over 300 uses for Woo! peanuts. I mean, who knew peanuts could be so versatile? Let's explore two facts right now. Part 1. Born into Slavery dreamed of becoming a musician. In 1864, on a small farm in Missouri, young George was born into slavery. After the abolition of slavery, he was nurtured by the Carver family until adulthood. Due to illness, George couldn't engage in field labor, providing him with an opportunity to stay at home and develop a passion for reading, laying the foundation for his future as a scientist. Education is the key to unlocking the golden door of freedom. However, at some point, he needed to go to school. Despite his passionate desire for education, he faced difficulties finding a place to satisfy his curiosity, simply because opportunities for people of color to study were very rare at that time. Eventually, it seemed some divine force hurt his passion. He attended and graduated from school in Minneapolis, Kansas. In his academic journey, George developed a strong affinity for both science and music. Aspiring to become a true artist, he initially participated in art classes at Simpson College. Perhaps guided by destiny, he eventually shifted his focus to the study of botany. It was at this point that his lifelong journey truly commenced. The farmers are facing difficulties in cultivation. It's time to lay aside my musical dreams and come to the aid of those struggling in the fields. George enrolled at Iowa State to study botany becoming the first black student at the institution. He earned both a bachelor's and a master's degree, gaining renown for his research. After receiving his master's, George became a professor at Iowa State, becoming the first African-American professor at the university. In 1896, he was invited to teach at Tuskegee, heading the agricultural department for the rest of his life. Part two, the scientist's first steps. Back then, cotton dominated in the southern United States. But for some reason, both cotton and other crops were gradually losing productivity. George Washington Carver, along with his students, witnessed the hardships faced by farmers. An idea emerged, crop rotation. Carver realized that cotton utilized nitrogen as its primary nutrient for growth. Therefore, when cotton plants died, the soil lacked enough nitrogen for other plants to thrive. Instead, they could use peanuts, an inexpensive and hardy crop. Peanuts could provide sufficient nitrogen for both cotton and other crops. Here comes an experiment. To nourish plants effectively, nitrogen. Peanuts have bacteria in their roots. These bacteria can extract nitrogen from the air, incorporate it into the soil, resulting in richer and more fertile soil. A groundbreaking experiment showed that rotating with peanuts enriched the soil and enhanced cotton yields, bringing economic benefits to farmers. But cotton can generate me additional income when sold. However, when it comes to selling peanuts, there's no one who wants to buy them. What should I do? The next invention will be part three. When you can do the common things of life in an uncommon way, you will command the attention of the world. Facing the concerns of the people, he began inventing products from peanuts to help increase productivity and boost the economy with this type of food. Thus, 300 inventions from peanuts were born, including peanut oil, peanut sausages, and cosmetics processed from peanuts. From here, hundreds of farmers benefited from using these innovations for their new crops. Additionally, during World War I, he found a way to replace textile dyes that were previously imported from Europe. He produced dyes with 500 different shades and invented a process for making paint and stains from soybeans. Surprisingly, he only patented three of his inventions. The rest he allowed people to copy and use for various purposes. This earned him the nickname, the plant doctor or the peanut genius. Prophet, ha ha, I need a smile on everyone's face. Part 4. The Lonely Scientist From his contributions, he received numerous awards nationally. However, his life revolved solely around dedication, 
not for any other reason. In 1940, he used all his savings to establish the Carver Research Foundation at Tuskegee to continue agricultural research. Let's applaud his contributions, truly remarkable. He chose not to marry because his time was dedicated to agriculture. After his passing in 1943, the place of his birth was designated a national monument, and a coin featuring his likeness was released to commemorate his contributions to agriculture. If you like our video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and goodbye.